Okay, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are talking about Lightroom tools that you need to know about and absolutely need to start using. I'm gonna say there are five tools to start because there's probably way more that I would recommend everybody starts learning how to use because they are the tools that are gonna take your photos from that 90% level that's like kind of done, kind of not done to that 100% level that is really gonna make your photos stand out. They're gonna make it undeniably yours and attach it to your style. What really makes photos stand out are the little details. That being said, these tips today are for both Lightroom and Lightroom CC. If you saw one of my earlier tutorials in 2021, you would know that I moved from Lightroom Classic to Adobe Lightroom. And what I can say is I prefer Adobe Lightroom 80 to 70% of the time. For whatever reason, Lightroom Classic is still better. I, I don't know what it is, but there's something about the Classic version that I just enjoy more. Anyway, that's a me problem. In today's video, these tools are transferable between the two platforms, so it doesn't matter which ones you use, you can use them either way. And with that, I wanna make sure that we have enough time to cover all five, so we are gonna hop right into today's video and jump on into Lightroom. So the first tool we're gonna talk about is the Geometry tab here in Lightroom. Now, you have a bunch of different options. You have Auto, Level, Vertical, and Full. What the geometry tab does is essentially eliminates distortion in your photos that are caused both from the lens and how you hold your camera. And the two focal lengths that you wanna be using to eliminate as much distortion as possible is 35 millimeters and 50 millimeters. But for today's purposes, we're just gonna talk about the geometry tool. Generally speaking, you could use the optics and the geometry tool as a two-way solution to fixing distortion. The optics tool just compensates for what lens you're using. So if you just hit enable lens corrections, you'll see that I shot this on 24 to 70 f 2.8, and then you have distortion and lens vignetting corrections. We're just gonna turn that on for now. I don't find it works some of the time because it's obviously factoring in um, its best guess on how the lens is distorting the image. And then all you have to compensate for is the geometry distortion, which is related to how you actually are holding the camera and its um, effect on the image, i.e. are you holding it up a little bit, down a little bit, crooked, and it'll compensate for those errors. So now after we fixed our lens distortion, we'll just hit auto. And what the photo is gonna do is obviously push in forward. Now, make sure that it's straight like that. But what's cool is that, let's say we turn this off, you see that the buildings get pulled back. Now that's because of the way I was holding the camera. It's pushing the buildings behind instead of forward. So we just hit auto. Now you have your different options here. So you have your level, vertical, and full. Level is to fix those horizontal lines like we talked about. Now it's gonna undo what we did previously because level's only talking about horizontal lines. Vertical on geometry fixes any converging vertical lines. And obviously that was the effect that we're seeing where it's fixing our vertical axis by bringing the photo forward. And full is a much more extreme version of auto. As you can see, it's pulling the entire photo. I, I've never really found a need to use this. And so we're just not. But yeah, this is the geometry tool. Obviously there's a huge difference. This photo is basically crooked and not really working. You see that there's actually distortion in the middle of the photo and then it fixes it out, fixes the, the perspective. Okay, so that's tool number one. Definitely it makes a huge difference in your photos. Not a lot of people know to use it. Tool number two, we are talking about the hue adjustment sliders and global color adjustments. So this example is gonna be a little bit quicker, but let's just hop into this photo here. Now this is a shot that I took in the snow along King Street, probably one of my favorite photos of 2021. One thing you'll notice about this photo is how nicely the orange tones are really blending together. And that's due to a function of this target tool right here. So if we click on the target tool, you'll see that a, uh, a little button shows up on the bottom here. It's somewhat similar in Adobe Lightroom Classic, and you can pick what you want to adjust, saturation, luminance, obviously hue is gonna change what the hue is, saturation is gonna change how much color we pump into the oranges. Ooh, I kinda like that even more. <laughs> That's the mood coming out. And then you have your luminance, which obviously changes the brightness of the specific color or the color values. This little target will actually hunt what the color is here. So instead of me going into my yellows and just adjusting my yellow tones, 
if I hit my target, it'll automatically tell me what tone I'm adjusting here uh, because it's picking it out. It'll actually adjust the colors themselves from the entire panel. So if I hit my target, you'll see that actually my yellows and my oranges are moving because it's a combination of the two and that'll help just more seamlessly edit the colors themselves. So just undo that and bring it back to where I want. Generally speaking, your hues are going to be different uh, based on whatever lighting conditions you're shooting in. So really using this tool is a good way to get consistency across your photos and make sure that you can have all of your work have a similar look and feel based on tones. Okay, so this next tool is to make sure that you can straighten out your photos perfectly every single time. So hopping on into Lightroom, we're going to hit on our crop tool. Now in Adobe Lightroom Classic, you're going to have a little measuring tape on the top right here. If you click that, you're going to get the following option. For Adobe Lightroom, you want to hit the command shift keys on your keyboard. And then you see now this option on our mouse shows up and it's just this little measuring tape and I can drag from left to right and it'll straighten out my photo. So what did I just do? Let's just undo that. This is how I shot the photo, nice and crooked. <laughs> so command shift, and now let's get rid of this grids here, put the thirds. This is the Spadina Bridge in Toronto, and I know that this is the most level part of the city that I can go for. Essentially, it's my horizon line. So if I hit command shift and then the mouse, and I drag from edge to edge, you'll see that it'll straighten my photo based on that bridge and now everything's good to go. Similar to our other tutorial, you'll see that there's significant warp in my buildings. Now, how do I go about fixing that? Well, when I go into my filter here, same thing, geometry here and auto. Look what just happened. This whole photo just got way straighter. Obviously, these buildings are still a little warped. You can't really get rid of the warp completely, but it's just so much better, right? Like before, after look how much the buildings move like night and day difference i'm telling you if you're not using it you're seriously missing out obviously then let's enable some lens correction get rid of that vignetting and it's like it's a whole different photo obviously if you had a tilt shift lens that compensates for a lot of these issues with straight lines and architecture photography but this is the closest thing that we got for normal people who just shoot with a regular camera lens so the next thing we're talking about is luminance masking this is something that deserves an entire tutorial for so if it does interest you please let me know definitely can make a tutorial about it. There are a lot of different ways that you can use it. And I'll show you a quick example on how it works. So this is the completed photo. And as you can see, the middle of this photo is brighter than the rest of it. So if I hit my editing button, you'll see that I've actually uh, added a radial gradient in the center here to make that brighter. So first thing we're gonna do is create a new mask with our radial gradient. And we're just gonna apply that to the middle of the frame. What we want to do is add more brightness to the middle of the frame to help draw the viewer's eye before we add a vignette to the edges. So this is our first mask. And now obviously if I were to add exposure, you see that it affects the buildings around it. We don't want to do that. We only want to affect the brightest areas. And the way to do that is with a luminance mask. So now in Lightroom, they've changed it and it's a little bit different. Before it used to be additive, now it's subtractive. So if I go over to my subtract panel, and I select luminance range. And as you can see, it's going to pull away the darker areas and only leave the brighter ones. So now the middle of our photo is pretty much there. I'm gonna say that's probably good enough for now. And then when I hit O on my keyboard, it's not affecting the buildings as much. So I can get rid of that and you can see it's only getting around the buildings. Obviously, dodge and burn, a lot more other tools that you can use to make the glow around the buildings look a lot nicer, but this is a base layer and would be the first step into creating that brighter center frame of a typical lookup shot you'd see on Instagram or Twitter or something like that. Okay, so final one for today is going to be hue selection and touching up hues for skin tones specifically. So we're gonna take this photo of me taking out the Christmas market back in December. And if I go to my brush tool, you'll see how many masks I already have applied to this photo. Now these were all luminance masks. Let's say I didn't like my skin tone. So if I go before, after, you can see that maybe I'm a little bit too gray in this photo, right? Like maybe I need to have a little bit more life added to me. 
if I go to my select subject panel, it's gonna go and select my subject and it's going to select me. Now the best thing that I can do here is subtract anything that I don't want, which are, uh, which is my jacket. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so that's my subject. Now, let's say I don't like my skin tones. I come down over to this hue panel and I can just slightly move them to the left to add a little bit more color to my skin than before. So if I go before on this one, before, after, before, after, subtle differences, but again, it definitely shows when you make those changes versus when you don't, because I would highly recommend that anybody always pays attention to the skin tones you can even juice up a little bit of the saturation here, maybe add a little bit of warmth and pull that down just by one. And now before, after. You can see that I was actually even a little bit yellowy green and now I probably am closer to somebody who's warm. <laughs> <laughs> I was freezing, so that's probably why my skin tones were a little bit off. Cool, and that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. These are some of the tools that I would recommend you learn how to use. Definitely play around with, figure them out, see how you can incorporate them into your own work. There's definitely a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, you'll figure out how to use them a lot more in your photos, and it's gonna definitely make all the difference once you figure out what it is exactly that you are trying to do uh, in your photos to then know what tools to actually use afterwards. Once you avoid using presets for your photos and you're able to custom edit all of them, these are the tools that you're gonna end up going towards to really dial in the colors how you want, sharpen your photos how you want, fix the lighting up, dodging and burning, all of that really great stuff that makes a photo uh, distinctly yours. So I wanna just say thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. If you have any comments, questions, feel free to put them down below. And yeah, with that, I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.